back out hitchhiking I am still a hitchhiker train hopper not so much anymore the hitchhiker sure <laughs> Well, I don't know. I feel like I'm not having a whole lot of luck today. It's been a good chunk of my day out here. And uh, I did a lot of busking today too. I made like $15, which is pretty cool. So I've had more success with that than I have with the hitchhiking. So I ended up taking a Greyhound bus over to my cousin's house where I hatched a plan for the next leg of the journey. So I am uh, currently staying with my cousin in uh, Mesa and um, I was thinking about how I'm going to get from here to like Texas and um, you know I haven't been liking the um, hitchhiking very much lately so um, I considered my options and I decided maybe biking would be the good, a good way to do it. So uh, my cousin knows this uh, like Amazon uh, returns auction site where you can get good cheap stuff and we bought this bike for like $30 which is great, great price. It's like a mountain bike which isn't great and it's also you know a cheap Chinese model so it's probably not going to be the sturdiest but I'm kind of okay with that. Um, basically, I'm taking it out for a test drive right now. Well, I picked kind of a bad day to do this because, uh, as you can see, there's water everywhere. This whole trail's freaking muddy. Those are the Superstition Mountains. And you can see how they got their name. Very strange and mystical looking. Especially with those clouds and the sun hitting it. Alright, well, made it up to the hill. To the base of the hill, anyway. Where is it? Somewhere over there. Behind me. Anyway, um, yeah, good. It's a good test because I learned some things. I learned that slight inclines and declines really matter, especially over long distances. This is all uphill. Um, I learned that it does not handle that well in the mud, which, you know, you could have guessed, but it's good to get to experience that. And I learned that the gear shifter is kind of wonky, which is pretty much like every other bike I've ever had. Um, and I learned that just because you can make something in a certain amount of time doesn't mean you will. Alright, so now it's time to begin the journey properly. Um, I am in Florence. Yeah, Florence, Arizona. And I'm going out this way and I got about 14 miles to make today, theoretically. I am quite tired, so I don't know if I'll make it the whole way. But uh, that's kind of why I've got so much food and gear on me. Alright, well I ended up getting uh, picked up. Somebody stopped in a truck and said, hey, do you need a ride? And I said, yeah. So now I am in... Uh, I don't remember. But I'm way further down the road than I even was intending to get. Uh, which is good. Because now I can uh, just kind of spend the night around here. And uh, in the morning, I can head off. I'm basically on I-10 now. There's going to be a road that runs alongside I-10 all the way to Tucson, which is good. Well, this is kind of what I was afraid of. Um, so this tire here is completely flat. 
Um, I try, I'm trying to, uh, to get it off so that I can look and see that this is the, the wrench, this is the one that came with it, and that's the only size that fits, but I think, I think it bent while I was trying to get this nut off, and now it won't work at all. Alright, well I bought the wrench, and the good news is I have identified the leak. Can you focus please? There it is. That's our leak, which should be patchable. As long as there's nothing else. There's no like secondary leak. I should probably check that, but should be fixable. Alright, that doesn't look great. You hear that? Yep. Yeah. Okay, um, I think it looks better this time. There's no bubbles coming up around the edges except for maybe right there. Fuck, I can hear it hissing still. God damn it. Okay, trying another time. If this one doesn't work, I don't know what to tell you. You know what else kind of sucks about this situation is um, I was kind of planning on um, trying to hire an editor to do the final touches on this latest video, the Slab City one. Um, but because I spent so much money on the bicycle and the accessories and shit, I uh, can't actually afford to hire anyone right now. So I'm probably going to end up doing that myself and it's probably going to end up taking me a while. Uh, and it's gonna make things slow, like it always does. And also, the editors that I've been talking to are charging a little more than I was expecting, but I guess that's more on me for having unrealistic expectations. I really just need someone to, like, put the maps up on the screen, put text up on the screen when I am doing the dono reads, and, like, maybe check the audio to see if it's good maybe do like some final touches i mean i would love to have someone just edit the whole thing for me but like I'm trying to like you know do the things that i like doing and then pawn off everything else onto somebody else it, it almost seemed like it was working now i hear that fucking hissing sound again um i think that's it i think that's all i can do to be honest with you i uh if that, that one didn't work, then nothing's gonna work because that, that was the best one I've done yet. It was flat, it was no air bubbles. I've done everything I can do. I think this bike is a wash. God, that fucking sucks. I wasted so much fucking money on this thing, man. Piece of shit. Well, Honestly, I'm thinking about it now. I might... It's, I don't know what the fuck I'm doing, obviously. Like, in general. Especially with this. I think maybe part of the reason why it keeps coming off is because I keep trying to inflate it while it's not attached to the rim. Right? Because the, the pressure actually comes from the rim... The, the inner tube being contained by the tread and the rim. Whereas when it's just in the tread, it can expand more than it's actually supposed to. So, so that's probably part of it, is me being fucking idiot, uneducated moron. Well, that seems to have done it. In the end, it was my own stupidity that was holding me back. So, uh, you know. I guess all that, uh, all that hysteria and drama for nothing. Okay, it's the next morning, and um, I had just gotten everything together. I got my backpack on, grabbed my uh, bike, and wheeled it out here. And then I was like, "Oh yeah, I should actually check if it's uh, still got full pressure in it." Lo and behold. 
completely flat. So, you know, I was kind of hoping that I would be able to ride this thing all the way to Tucson at least and then sell it there. Um, the fact that that hatch didn't hold means that uh, I can't trust it. I can't trust it that far. It's 30 miles. It's just simply uh, too much of a liability. So the bike itself, I'm just gonna leave it here with a free sign on it. Somebody should see it and take it so it's not going to waste. And it's not just gonna sit out and rust somewhere. You know, if I were, I don't know what the issue is. If it's just like cheap wheels or, or if I'm the problem, like I just don't know how to apply a patch. I mean, that's true, but I don't know if that's really the problem here. I don't know. You kind of, you get what you pay for. And unfortunately, even though I didn't pay much for it, I also just don't really have much. So would have been nice to, uh, to not waste all that money, but here we are. It's back to the old Hitchhiker's Playbook. Just get on the ramp. I am depressed. I'm struggling to find the motivation to really do anything right now. I just feel like... I don't know. I just feel like any time I start to try and like make progress towards something like a little bit better, I just get kicked down. The situation with the bike is like, it's the same situation as I had with my car, right? I went and picked up my car from my mom's house and uh, I knew it had problems and then it made it like a week before it broke down. I'm back on foot. Like the universe just does not want me to... doesn't want me to do any better than I'm doing right now. Alright, well, today I decided that I was going to uh, make a sign and uh, try and get a ride from that. It says, looking for a ride to Tucson, that's all that says. I didn't really, but I played some music and I uh, got some money from it, so that's good. Maybe uh, maybe today we'll I'll uh, break even or something. I think I paid like three dollars for some coffee, so I definitely got that covered. I haven't eaten anything yet today, which is a shame, but uh, you know it is what it is. I was thinking about it a bit last night, um, and I think that. I, uh, I need to get off the road. I mean, I know that's what I was saying like four months ago, but uh, yeah, it really needs to happen. So I think the plan right now, I was going to, to Houston was kind of the idea, but I think maybe, um, I think maybe I need to just beeline it back for Kansas and uh, try and get some of my like documents, get the process started on replacing that stuff so that I can actually apply for uh, CDL and stuff, CDL school. I think uh, that needs to be the next goal and that needs to happen fairly quickly because I don't think I, I don't think what I'm doing right now is very sustainable. All right, got a ride. We are now in Tucson. Like northern Tucson. I love just sitting and staring at the mountains, honestly. I could do it all day. It's just so many little nooks and crannies and like stuff going on. And you got these saguaros sitting here. I like the, I like the southwest, I really do. I feel like uh, like a couple years ago, before I'd ever been to the Southwest, my impression was that uh, it was just all desert and hot and there was nothing really interesting to see, but I, I've totally changed my mind on that. I love the Southwest. 
such a cool area all right i thought about it for a couple days and uh, i realized you know why am i so tied to the idea of needing to have a backpack when a duffel bag could do just as well and this is actually like a duffel bag slash luggage thing so um that might be convenient now it's definitely going to be worse for like walking long distances but really i don't want to be doing that anyway so like why am i uh why am i optimizing for long walks when a you know ideally i want to be getting rides and taking buses and trains and that's the other thing is that like i've been thinking more and more about the trains i would really like to get on a train actually out of here um, and I think this thing is just too clunky. It wouldn't work. Um, you know, it's nice that it, it fits relatively well, except that it, the straps are really old and uncomfortable and falling apart. That's the repair that I made. I'm not even sure it's doing anything. Um, so that was probably going to fall apart at some point anyway, which I don't want and uh all the you know stuff hanging off of it is really awkward and the storage space is like split up between this top compartment which is pretty small and this bottom compartment which is even smaller and then a bunch of tiny compartments on the sides which is just not what i need you know i have too much bulky stuff to be uh to be using this backpack that has a bunch of small compartments and stuff so this one there's one big compartment on the inside that should be good and then i also have my uh my day pack inside here which i'm going to keep um, and i'm going to keep a bunch of stuff in there ideally um i would be able to store that in here as well but maybe i'll just wear the day pack and then carry the duffel bag we'll see could, could do something like that it's possible um so now to go through the process of transferring everything over Okay, well I can fit the sleeping bag and the camping pad in there, um, but if I do that, that's pretty much all that's going to fit. The bulky clothes items going on bottom seems like it fits perfectly. Um, socks and underwear and stuff, I don't really know. Uh, let me try some more stuff. Okay, well it definitely all fits, right? That's good. So then the next question is, is this going to be unreasonably difficult to carry? So, I guess I'll just uh, pick it up. It's like not terrible. It's not great. Definitely if I was walking very far, it would get heavy very quickly. Um, try putting it over my shoulder. Kind of. Yeah, so it's like not awful. If I do this, carry it like that. Um, probably try this instead. Well, so here's the here's the other thing. Is that this uh, this backpack does have wheels and a uh, handle, so that's possibility especially if I'm you know walking along a paved area um, so in cities that's probably not that bad but you know, not always going to be in the city and also like that if I have to just like over my shoulder Not too bad. It's actually like you kind of grab like that. And I, I don't know. Like long term, is that going to be real? It's not going to be very comfortable, I don't think. But but I mean, it's possible. All right, I'm down um, on the south side by this big Walmart now, right near I-10. And it's actually turning out to be a little difficult to. Uh, get to a place to sleep um, but I think I'll be all right
So, like, uh, you know, like a week ago or something when I was over at that truck stop being real depressed and stuff, I don't know what came over me, but I just decided to grab a pack of cigarettes <clears throat> and started smoking them. And, uh, I know it's bad for me, but it kind of seemed like, I don't know, one of those things is bad for you, but you won't face the consequences immediately, so kind of fit the bill for self-destructive behavior that I was looking for. Um, and I finished that pack and then I tried to stop for a little bit and then I bought another pack and I, I didn't finish all of that one, I gave some of it away and then that was like two days ago and I tried, I went two days without it and now I'm back. It's weird because it's like an, a purely psychological addiction, which is strange. I don't feel like a physical need for cigarettes at all. Like the, the effect that they give is nice, but it's not really like the thing that keeps you coming back. It's a little strange. I've never been, well, it's not totally true. I feel like I was addicted to weed in that sort of way at one point, but uh, not, uh, that was a while ago. And I think the cigarettes are just a little more insidious than that. You know, weed is... It's not really addictive, it's like psychologically addictive. And I guess cigarettes are similar. But like even more so. So, now I've got a, a habit that I need to kick. It's also like an expensive habit. So... That's fun, just introducing new problems into my life. The horrible thing is that I like it. Alright, sorry about the wind. I don't know if there's really much I can do about that. I'm trying to like block it with my body, but... Um, so I've been in Tucson for like, I don't know, like almost a week now probably something like that and um, you know I don't know my, my mental health has not been very good lately um, I think I just need to get off the road you know I made a, a community post a little bit ago saying that I want to be off the road by like uh, April or May <laughs> it might be too windy to do this right now I don't know um, but yeah, I I would like to be off the road in the next couple months, basically. And by off the road, I mean on the road in a different way, because I want to do the truck driving thing. Um, but right now, I'm kind of just like, kind of just being lazy in Tucson, um, which is fine, I think. I think I really do want to uh, to get a train out of here. I think that would be ideal. So I don't want to I don't want to have to hitchhike the whole way to Texas. I think it's a little too much. So. If I can get a train out of here, I think um, it would probably take me to like El Paso, uh, but I might have to get off somewhere in there because I've heard that they do like checks in that area because it's so close to the border. They they're worried about you know immigrants or uh, you know alien aliens. Um, so you know we'll see. There's there's definitely risks involved in that, but I I, I think it's probably a good idea still. So, um, yeah, but I haven't really done much looking at that. I'm just kind of chilling right now. I got this new stove uh, from Walmart when I was staying with my cousin, but the uh, nozzle is much wider than the old one I had, and I feel like it's really just blowing hot air out the sides and, like, not actually heating up my cup very much at all. If I had a bigger cup, it might not be as much of a problem, but... I just feel like I'm wasting so much fuel with this one. One day while I was sitting there in Tucson, I got a uh, Instagram DM from a guy who goes by Fladonka, at Fladonka on Instagram, and he said he was in Tucson, headed east. So, um... <clears throat> I guess I just figured, why not? 
I need to get that way anyway, so I accepted and uh, he picked me up and we started riding together east out of Tucson. <laughs> This is standing in El Paso looking out at Mexico. Pretty sure it's like bar for bar the same same shot that I had in my last video. The last video in this area, I mean. But look at that. You can just see the whole thing laid out before you. I like how the uh, the Mexicans don't seem to have any problem with painting their houses bright colors. See lots of blues and reds and purples. And... Looks nice. That train right there is like pretty much, it's probably like the exact one that I got off of when I was coming through here last time. I don't know if it's going uh, east or west. Probably it's going west if I had to guess, but that's the train line. crazy mountains it's all, it's all El Paso wonky wonky roads feels like Mexico around here. I've only been to Mexico once, but it was exactly like this. Uh, looks like this over here is the border. around here are just an absolute clusterfuck to be honest with you especially anywhere near the highway yeah like how the fuck am I supposed to know what's going on here when you got these intersections where you got slip lanes and like three lanes going straight and one lane going turning and then you got like I don't even know what's going on over there it's just a clusterfuck man Nice colorful sunset tonight. Well, <clears throat> I might give uh, El Paso my award for the least walkable city I've ever been to. But on the other hand, um, what they lack in walkability, they make up for in high quality infrastructure. I don't necessarily think that like the spaghetti highways are very well designed or anything, but 
I understand it's sometimes necessary and the build quality on everything is really really nice every bridge every retaining wall every little thing is kind of like it's all got a unified style I'm all, all the way up here on like the east east side but uh, everything looks the same as it did all the way on the west side it's all really well designed there's patterns and on the median you know most cities wouldn't bother doing something like that it's got to be more expensive I'm sure so uh, a plus on like aesthetics but like uh, you know a D minus or an F on uh, convenience walkability I've been noticing a lot of places playing fast and loose with the Disney uh, IP this is just one example but I was also looking at uh, there's like a dentist the kids dentists uh, over somewhere else where uh, their font their logo font was just the Disney font and then there was like an Aladdin cafe or something like that that had like the Aladdin font they just don't seem to really give a shit around here I mean I don't know I guess Disney doesn't give a shit either because they're still up honestly it's been a while since I actually saw some proper rail graffiti but now I'm down here at the uh, down here at the tracks it looks like they have torn down all the fences maybe even sleep over here so this is pretty much where I would want to be if I want to get on a train I've been like going back and forth on it though I don't know if I really want to get on a train right now I mean you know, I can't busk if I'm on, if I'm always by the train tracks and shit. But I can at least come back over here and like, check it out. I'm starting to recognize a few of these tags. It must be possible to get out from right here because there's so many. Yeah, I think you're not like super visible from here, which is nice. But, uh, yeah. Well, even if I don't get on a train, I at least want to kind of document some of this stuff. You know, some people don't like uh, having their tags documented or whatever. But I think that's just, uh, I don't know. I don't think that's right. I think it's cool. Here's a real big wall. Nickel. That's the guy who helped me get my first ever train ride in uh, San Antonio. And that's filling me with confidence. So yeah, I don't really think it's a good idea for me to be trying to hop out in a place where experienced train hoppers seem to think it's a bad hop out. I think it makes much more sense for me to uh, start hitchhiking east and uh, maybe I can get down to Del Rio. I know that place is a lot easier. Not perfect, but easier. Um, or just, you know, hitchhike all the way, all the way out there. Kind of depends on how it goes. I can make that decision when I get uh, a little closer. But I would love to just start getting into the hitchhiking rhythm. So, I would sit up in this little, I don't even know what you call this. It's a weird Mars landscape over here. Um, it's here for a couple days. And uh, turns out this is uh, too hidden for my own good because last night I spent like, I don't know, like 30 minutes wandering around in the dark trying to find my tent. <laughs> so it's a pretty good spot. There's some like construction and stuff going on over here. So if anything, that's not great, but it's too late now because I'm packed up and moving on. I am going to go 
to a truck stop it's down on the southeast side of town and uh, it's actually a really big truck stop so I'm thinking I might stop there and like uh, uh, do some busking because that was you know last time I did that at a truck stop it went pretty well so maybe I can do better this time if I can just uh, my uh, playing is getting pretty rusty too so I need to um, get some practice in it seems like a good opportunity and then I will just head on out should be good so I just paid $15 for three things of ramen a big uh, well six uh, beef bratwurst and then uh, rice and tuna which I've been doing a lot lately it's pretty cheap as well um, and then I splurged a little bit on like a uh, like a vegetable I don't know smoothie juice drink because I feel like I need to get some some vitamins in and uh, some ibuprofen but even with all that only $15 is really good you could easily end up spending $15 on fast food if you're not careful um, and a lot of times I do cave and I get some fast food but when you look at the price on this it's like you know this is five good meals for the price of like one one and like a quarter um, fast food meals so just underlining the importance of uh, buying food at grocery stores and not going to fast food just a really lovely neighborhood right here randomly you know El Paso um, you know they got some some problems with like walkability and stuff but they do make up for it there's a lot of buses um, you know, I'm all the way out here on the east side and there's still lots of bus service around here it's like a little bit expensive but not really it depends on you know what you're comparing it to um, so yeah I mean my final verdict on El Paso is very cool I'd love to come back here sometime with some money for a hotel and a you know a car to drive around with it's definitely lots to see <clears throat> lots of cool little restaurants and shops and stuff and uh, very good vibes well <clears throat> I um, I just got off of a uh, video call lesson with a Vietnamese teacher online and uh, I think it went pretty well so uh, also the, the weather's pretty nice right now this area is pretty interesting it's cool I feel like I'm actually moving I'm not just staying in one place all the time so uh, I feel like I'm I'm doing pretty good right now um, it's a uh, crazy how the, the the mood swings out here you know it's like what a week and a half two weeks ago I was like extremely depressed and like uh, just feeling like bad feeling like I it, what's the point of all this um, and now I'm feeling great I'm like man I got like I got food I got I know what I'm doing I feel like I'm pretty confident for the most part like you know I could do certain things better obviously but I feel like I'm actually uh, I'm pretty content right now I just hope, uh, hope that feeling lasts and uh, I know it won't but you can hope it's real dusty today for some reason the wind is all kicked up and got all that dust in the air the easiest place to see it would be on my phone screen it's really obvious there but obviously I can't really show you that but everything's just getting a fine layer of uh, sand and dust on it That's fine. This um, stove is uh, useless, as it turns out. I guess it's probably the wind, you know, kind of makes sense. Uh, the stove just won't light. Um, again, I think that the, the stove is just way too wide. Uh, it's just shooting gas out from all sides instead of shooting it up at the thing it's supposed to be heating. 
And I think if it was a narrower nozzle, you'd probably be able to light it, even in this wind. I mean, the last one I had didn't have this problem, so... Um, I'm probably just gonna have to waste this food that I got ready. I mean, I was gonna cook some ramen and stuff, but... I guess not. Yeah, it's windy again today, and it's supposed to start raining in an hour or two here. So, uh... I don't really know what I'm doing. I guess I'm just going to hang on and wait for tomorrow. I don't know if the weather's really supposed to be that much better, but hopefully it'll be, you know, a little better. I think this might be what I'm looking at for tonight. Just get out of the rain. Uh, but yeah, it's not going to be very comfortable. Man. So it's windy right here, but then you step out on the other side of the building. I sat down for one second at the Loves and they kicked me out. They really uh, hate travelers, I guess. But on the other side, there's a bunch of uh, graffiti down here, so I guess I got something to look at while I'm freezing cold tonight. I hope the weather's better tomorrow. I think even if it isn't, I need to actually do something. Oh look, I was zoomed in that whole time. That's lovely. There's the oldest one I see from 2009. There's plenty from the last decade or so. So obviously this is a pretty uh, common spot. I guess people either get off in El Paso and then end up trying to hitchhike out or they come to El Paso like me thinking they're gonna catch out on a train and then uh, decide it's not worth it. So I guess uh, I guess this is the spot where people end up. I stand corrected, 2006, that's the oldest one. Alright, well it is pretty cold. Um, it's just spitting a little bit right now. We've actually dodged most of the rain. But it is raining a little bit and it's going to get a little bit harder overnight. So the plan, I guess, is just to sit up under that bridge. I can't really set up a full tent because I can't stake it into the ground. So I'll just, uh, I'll just do the uh, sleeping bag and um, uh, wear my coat inside the sleeping bag and socks and I'll put a hat on and that should be enough. We'll see. Alright, now obviously I gotta be careful about where I set up because I don't want to, uh, you know, I don't want to get wet. And I saw earlier that there's this crack up here, so I don't want to set up under that, but I think sand right here is a little bit higher so I don't think the uh, water is going to come this way so I think if I just set up like right here I should be fine so I'm burning and shit but should be okay. One thing that really sucks is that my uh, my zipper has been completely busted for a while. I can move it up and down but it doesn't uh, doesn't actually zip. So it's going to be a little colder than I would like, but I think it should still be fine. Alright, um, well, now that the rain's actually coming down, I feel like, um, I feel like I need to be oriented the other way. It's also like blowing in from the side a little bit. Yeah, so, I don't know. It's probably slightly better, but I don't think I don't think there's a perfect solution here. I think I might just get a little bit wet and very cold. All right, I'm starting to get this little like flash flood stream here. And it is a little too close for comfort, to be honest with you. I was hoping it would be way further that way. So I'm just going to pick everything up here, and I'm going to move up here. And I'm literally just going to huddle there until the rain stops. Oh, good. I just got all my shit up here, and I realized that is not dry either. Not even a little bit. Um... 
Well, it was a good one. Had a good time here in El Paso. This is where the fun ends. This is gonna suck. Yeah, so it's supposed to end within the next hour. And I don't know, I think the, uh, the radar is not really that accurate, but it doesn't look like there's anything behind it. Um, but then again, it also says that it's really not supposed to stop fully until like, I mean, almost tomorrow morning. So to be honest with you, I don't really know. I think, uh, I think I might just be in for a long fucking night. Girls Juniors open 24 hours, so I guess that's where I'm sheltering for now. All my stuff is going to either either be dry or it's going to be wet. We'll figure that out later, but I was like losing feeling in my fingers, so I had to, I had to move. Okay, <clears throat> rain has stopped, but it is still very cold and all my shit is probably wet. That's kind of interesting looking though. Um, so I guess now I just try to like, you know, sleep. Hopefully my, um, my sleeping bag isn't so soaking wet. I don't think it was like sitting in a puddle or anything. Well, it might have, uh, might have gotten wet enough when it was sitting up on that ledge. I don't know. Um, but I'm going to try and get back in the sleeping bag and see if I can make it work. I also wonder if that uh, ditch is still full of water. It might be. Okay, good. The water has stopped. So I should be able to get back over here. And take a look at my stuff. Okay, well... Um, the, uh, the sleeping bag did dry out, um, it was a little wet to begin with, but it did dry out eventually. Um, it's pretty good, the, this material is pretty good for that. Um, it's not, not very comfortable, but it's the next morning now, so I guess, uh, it's time to regroup and figure out what I need to do. I might need to go do some laundry at the very least. Um, yeah. In other news, I've been in contact with my dad again, and um, he has essentially disowned me. I went on to say some really nasty things that I probably didn't need to say. Um, just kind of the emotion of the, the previous night and uh, just a bunch of stuff was kind of getting to me. Just of it is, my dad doesn't want me at his house, doesn't even really want me in the area, to be honest. So uh, things might have to change because of that and uh, that's fine. Well, I tried. I gave it a few songs, but my voice is shot already what happens if you don't practice enough if you're not singing at full volume often enough your voice will just go probably the cigarettes don't help at all would be my guess but I've got some coffee I'm running real low on money but uh you know oh well I guess it's whatever well been a couple hours out um, on the ramp. It was going pretty well. I mean, you know, I didn't get a ride, so it wasn't going that well. But um, I came back over here and I got a sign set up and I'm playing some music. And the sun has come out and I'm feeling better emotionally. These uh, freaking mood swings are kind of kind of killing me. But um, that's just how it goes. I think that's going to be the theme of today's uh, today's episode. It's just fucking ups and downs, you know. I don't know. I feel like I might be about at my limit here. 
there's lots of people on this road. You know, you can see the road kind of goes all the way up this way. Uh, and I know it goes into town that way too. So I'm hopeful that like people do use this road to access the highway, not just trucks. But, um, you know, no luck so far. I got a tip from one of the guys who kind of lives down here. Um, there's like four guys, I think, at least, living in these tunnels. Uh, that kind of goes like under the highway here. I got a tip from one of them that uh, you want to be a little bit further down this ramp. Um, he had some sort of reasoning, I forget what it was, but there's definitely like, there's a little bit of a shoulder here, so people can actually stop, that'd be nice. And then, uh, I think he said people also use this little track here as a road, I don't know. I haven't seen anybody on there, I was out here all day today, so. I don't really know, but it does seem like maybe this is a little bit nicer of a place, especially also because um, you can actually see who's coming. And you don't have to like guess who's gonna turn and what time and whatnot. Uh, so it's like four o'clock. I'll give it another, maybe not even that long, maybe like 45 minutes. I'm getting pretty burned out and uh, I'm really tired. I didn't sleep well last night for obvious reasons. So uh, I am very tired. I just would rather kind of go to bed, but you know, the sun's still pretty high in the sky. It's There's still daylight to, to burn. So it's, it would be a waste to try and like go set up camp somewhere right now I'll give it a few more minutes I kind of wonder like maybe I should go all the way down there because the actual place where you get onto the highway is further down all right good ride we're officially on the road so now it's three o'clock like 3 30 or so so I guess I have enough time uh, there is a family dollar over there. I might want to go check that one out first. Get some cheap food. And then I'm going to get on the on-ramp over here. Alright, and that's where I'm going to leave off for this video. So, uh, thank you for everybody for watching and enjoying. I'm going to go ahead and read some donations. So I got $20 from Michael. He said, hoping and praying you stay safe. CDL sounds good. Uh, yeah, I, yeah, I'm not so sure about the CDL anymore. I need to think about things, especially since I can't really stay in Kansas City. I mean, I, I still could, but it just, I would have to uh, do things differently than I was planning. And uh, now I'm thinking I might just go to somewhere else, Houston or somewhere in Texas maybe, and uh, try and get it some other sort of job there and uh try and get my license switched over and get documents replaced and then and then maybe go for the cdl but maybe not either i don't know things are up in the air right now don't really know but thank you michael um and i have another 300 hundred dollar donation from ernest from march thank you ernest you're really keeping me alive here um, so I can't thank you enough. And I have a $25 donation from Evan. He says, hope this helps, brother. Still watch your videos and love the freedom you have. Thank you. I, I wouldn't have any freedom if it weren't for you guys. So, thank you very much. Okay, I got uh, $50 from Gabe. He said, I like your videos, man. God bless. Thank you so much. God bless you as well. And I got uh, $25 from Veronica. Um, I actually think that was somebody who gave me a ride and then they asked to donate to me through Cash App. So, um, But thank you to you anyway because <laughs> the rides and the money are all... Um, the rides are... <laughs> the rides are also a form of donation and so I'll, uh, I'll go ahead and thank you anyway. Um, I got $20 from Ken, who said, stay safe, brother. I am trying, and I hope I hope I do. <laughs> all right, and uh, that's all the donations. So, um, uh, yeah. I think if there's anything else I need to talk about at the moment, I don't really think so. I kind of just been uh, 
plugging away at the hitchhiking. So I'm in Texas right now. And uh, that video should be coming soon. So, see y'all later. Thank you.